Good morning. Um, quite a bit has been accomplished over the last six months since we were sworn in late last year for the 2022-26 council term. I'm very fortunate to have a great council and together we are looking forward to serving the citizens of Bell. I would like to recognize my council here today. Uh, we have Councillor Thompson, we have Councillor Millette, Councillor Carr, Councillor Chatton, Councillor Brown, Councillor Inright Miller. Uh, regrets are from Councillor Alcock. Al he uh, has a sick child today, and I hear Councillor Kelly is chasing geese on the waterfront trail. <laughs> um, but before I get started on my presentation, I would like to thank some individuals who made this event possible. I would like to thank today's breakfast sponsor, Converge Gas. It's been great. Um, I know it's hard to get sponsors for me, and I'm glad you jumped aboard or we wouldn't have a sponsor today. Um, I would also like to thank the Chamber of Commerce. I know we have a great uh, partnership with the Chamber, and uh, it can not only, I don't know how it could get better, Joe, uh, and I'll leave it at that. It's been a great supporter of not only past councils and, and councils looking forward. So, uh, Jill, it's, it's, you never disappoint me. So. Uh, except the pictures I'm going to have the slideshows up here. So, Don't forget uh, I'm coming after you. Yeah, I'm coming after you. You speak last, so I might be there. I'd like to thank city staff, uh, some of them are here today, that helped me with this presentation. Uh, now, without further ado, I'll, we'll get underway. Um, I guess the biggest question I get asked, and uh, it's about what has changed since being the past mayor and, and mayor looking forward. Um, a lot has stayed the same, and a, and a lot has changed. Um, some of the things that have changed is a massive population growth. We are one of the biggest expanding cities and uh, we're growing very fast. Other things that have changed, uh, obviously there's housing crisis and a, and a homeless crisis also. Um, and we're trying to address this. We had a homeless summit with uh, council over the last two weeks and we're setting targets to, to try to help to reduce through building of not only transitional houses, more affordable housing and uh, you know hopefully uh, it'll alleviate. But this is not a problem of, of Valvo, it's a problem all over the province. Um, even in cities like Bancroft and smaller communities are, are suffering the same. So it's basically three levels of government that are going to have to work together and, and we challenge all the governments to work together on, on trying to find solutions. Um, Casey's County has come out with a plan, they announced uh, at Council, uh, 7,000 houses in seven years and they're going to need help from our municipality and our councils there to support their plan. Uh, again, we have a doctor shortage, industrial land that we'll talk about um, in investing in uh, emergency services. Okay, we got all that out. Now we have the capital budget. We went through two budgets, the capital budget and the operating budget. So the capital budget works out to be uh, just over 40, uh, $58 million. We have a total asset of $2.3 billion. Our assets are on par, uh, in relatively good shape. There are some that aren't in such good shape. Um, you'll never get the roads all fixed, but we're working on that. So uh, it's uh, it's a never ending. We have other things that uh, need to need to be fixed, and I'll touch on on that later in the speech. Um, capital capital project highlights: uh, we have 12 road reconstruction and resurfacing bridges and roadside uh, projects. Such projects as Dundas Street East, McWilliams Bridge, Blessington, River Road, Reconstruction Airway, Airport Parkway, and uh, other nine combined roadside and roadside water, wastewater, stormwater projects. And as a matter about the environment, we have uh, projects that we're basically separating our, our wastewater uh, from our rainfall and uh, to get the plant uh, up to speed and try to divert uh, things in, in the water to other areas rather than our wastewater plant. Uh, exciting development I'll talk about later is on our books is the old fairground site redevelopment. Uh, projects that have past councils have done and we're just finishing up would be Hill, Hillcrest Park development that we're working on, uh, BMX pump uh, track phase two at Riverside and in this capital budget we put over 13 million in it uh, to help repair the wastewater plant. Um, now to move to the operating budget, we had a total uh, operating budget of $187 million. $117 million of this was funded by property taxes. 60% of our internal city departments and 40 are external. So basically we are only control 60% of our budgets, outside budgets such as social services, police, um, things like that we don't control. And a lot of budgets because of inflation this year had major increases, and some 
we're well, we're well over 10%. Um, overall, our city internal budgets increased by 3.31%, and our external board increases were 7.9%. So you can see just how uh, inflation has hit our external uh, external budgets, and um, it's it's a matter of um, trying to find service cuts, uh, which nobody seems to like, uh, including myself. But it was a tough budget this year, and I think everybody knows that. Um, we expanded things in our budget, such as transportation. We expanded our core mobility transit service uh, to both wards. We invested in healthcare, um, such thing as investment in Kingston Hospital. Uh, other investments are investments in long-term care through Hastings County, social services, investments in social housing. One of the main investments that has hit us with expansion is our emergency services, and it's time to expand emergency services. And I'm proud to say in this budget, we've increased uh, police officers and firefighters, our emergency services. And this is something that's gonna take years. Uh, our growth is projected, our emergency services are important, and it's something our council is focused on to implement a strategy to get our emergency personnel online with our population. Um, our pro property tax increases. Um, we have four different property um, property classes. Uh, they're on the screen. Belleville Urban, which is the majority, is committed 3.15. Uh, comparable to other municipalities, and other municipalities have their tight issues or have their budget issues. Uh, we were able to come in uh, in the middle of the pack, I guess, with an inflation rate of 6.3%. Um, lowering tax increases. Could we have done better? I, I guess we, uh, I'm always the one to say we can do better. Uh, the thing was, is how far we wanted to cut or decrease services. And some of the things that were going to, were on the table and, and council discussed them and we decided that it wasn't the way to go down the road with such things as cutting road servicing or road patching. Uh, if we would have increased bag tags and increased recreation fees, we probably could have come up with another one or one and a half percent, uh, such as decrease to leaf and yard waste, all that were on the table. But council has supported uh, not and cutbacks, so this budget basically was an increase to services, uh, mainly uh, planners, police, fire, uh, doctor recruiters, uh, things like those issues. Upcoming projects. Um, we have many projects. Some of them are not uh, not going to be pretty, and, and some might be. Um, we have issues with Myers Pier. I don't think it's any secret that it needs major work. Um, right now, the high water levels have waved out most of the rocks and stone under the pier. There's many roads under it, and basically, um, there's going to have to be a major repair. So this is going to be a tough decision for this council or the next council to decide how we want to develop our waterfront and have a, have a plan or repair the pier if it's repairable. Um, other things are wastewater uh, plant improvements, uh, 13 million to get the plant uh, a little better. We passed uh, a power, uh, power generators on the last council meeting, uh, but it's going to be a big picture of this. With the expansion, we're eventually going to have to do a complete service on our wastewater plant. Uh, figures that I'm hearing now in today's dollars are well over $100 million. I see Perry, our director, our manager, is saying maybe higher than that, but uh, it's not. He's saying $100 million. We'll guarantee that price today. Um, <laughs> other things uh, that we spoke about was obviously Hillcrest Park. Uh, YMCA, it's, I don't know if Dave Allen's here. I'll give him a shout out. Uh, I see him back there. There's other, I, I forgot to give a shout out to former Councillor Tom Lafferty. He's dressed me today, so Tom, uh, Tom has helped build the city. And former Mayor Ross McDougal, he's somewhere in the crowd. And Ross asked me before, am I nervous when I speak? I go, I'm always nervous when I speak. And he says, I am too. So, but uh, as we get going, we'll get better. Um, service in the industrial land, and that's a slide to move. But uh, the old fairground site, redevelopment. So basically, it's going to be, that's uh, not a great slide, but uh, the YMCA, you can see that the far left, uh, it'll be high to mid-density builds. So there's... Uh, scheduled for a couple of apartment buildings around 80 to 100 units, uh, basically residential. I think that this is something that we do have to look at um, if it would be a site of, for uh, affordable housing and, and issues like that because we don't have a lot of land left in the city. Um, there'll be roads that are, go out on Catherine Street, another road I believe it's out on uh, Dunnett Boulevard, and you'll have a, a main th uh, th th throughway 
through, uh, through the fairgrounds. So exciting times ahead with that. We have uh, just over, I believe, 20 acres to service. And uh, it's exciting what staff have presented so far on a plan to make the best land usage in the area. We also invested in healthcare. Uh, I'd like to give a shout out to Karen Post, our new uh, physician recruiter. Karen's back there. I said I'd send her out, Karen, so uh, hopefully you don't speak after me today. So Karen, when we started the doctor recruitment program, I, I guess that I'm aging this both. It was probably about 12 years ago. And through Karen, we've recruited over 40 family doctors. So Karen, um, I couldn't I put you, you couldn't be in a better role. And I know you uh, last week were at a conference in London or in Niagara Falls, I believe. So uh, Karen's been out and selling the city, and there's no better person than Karen to sell the city. Um, we uh, do have the same program. It's $150,000, which we're looking at uh, other means of uh, actually recruiting and more of a, an area recruitment. So Karen has made connections with obviously Quinney West, Brighton, and in the county to see if we can recruit as, as a group and, and make it a Bay of 20, I guess, uh, Bay of 20 doctor recruitment. Um, it was announced uh, by uh, MPP Todd Smith uh, about a month ago that we have ses uh, res recently received uh, increased funding for nurse, uh, nurse practitioners. We uh, received funding for 2.6 additional nurse practitioners, 1.5 administration positions, a registered nurse and a social worker. This should uh, a lot for about two to 3,000 patients that will have some type of primary health care. We're still about 10,000 patients short. Um, it's something that's a, a province issue, but unless we take care of it ourselves, uh, it's not going to happen. So uh, moving forward, we're investing in, uh, in doctor recruitment. Last council, uh, investor in the program, and I was at the graduation uh, ceremonies at Loyalist College for nurses to stay in our community. And that project has been very successful also. So we're looking at the, the whole healthcare picture. Um, we've invested in Kingston University Hospital. They, uh, this is not our first investment in Kingston Hospital, uh, but the stats of how many people in our area visit Kingston, not only on a daily, weekly, uh, it, it needs to be done. And we've uh, allotted $2 million of payment starting in this year's budget. Um, other investments, we have done is um, our projected growth and we have to get the city ready. Uh, population base within the city uh, is, in, is steadily to increase and we're looking at 75,000 people by 2051. Uh, the Loyalist Secondary Plan is where our growth is scheduled for. Uh, we're right now going through engineering reports, uh, pump station uh, upgrades will be on this council's plate and we will be okay to get, we have enough service land or will be service land for our res residential growth over the next 30 years. Um, I've got a plug in here for Jill now, my next slide. Um, it's about partnership and you look how it's grown. We started with one event with the Chamber of Commerce and we're up to I think seven or eight events and some of these events have won awards. The past, I think Caribbean Festival in Diwali uh, and that's credit to the Chambers to be new events and to, to win awards not only uh, locally, but in, in, uh, in Ontario. Um, service industrial land, uh, I believe it's Watson that did a report. Um, I could be wrong, but I'll give them a plug anyways. But uh, they did a, a report on service industrial land. Uh, right now, we have no service industrial land. Uh, when my council in 2000, it would be 11 or 12, uh, we're faced with the same problem. No service in industrial land. We were losing sites, I remember. Uh, Karen Post at the time was our economic manager and her and I standing in unserviced land and saying to developers and, and uh, lead people that were searching for land that we could have it serviced right away. But it did take three years and we constantly were not uh, in that gate. So at the day, Council of the Day um, decided to expand the industrial park uh, expropriation uh, back eight years ago or nine years ago we uh, expropriated approximately 600 acres of land. Um, that's all been sold, uh, it's great, but we have a problem now that we have to service the remaining, we initially serviced 226 acres, and we have to uh, service now 400 acres. Right now, council has passed an environmental assessment, has started, but it looks like to be about three years before we're going to have the land service. 
Um, we still don't have in our report, they're uh, figuring that we only have about 10 years of industrial land left once we get this service. I know we had this amount nine to 10 years ago. Uh, Bell is a booming city for, you know, not only loyal workforce, it's a great place to live. So that's something that's going to be on the plate. Uh, council is going to have to look for the future and decide where we want to move the industrial park. Uh, northeast, west, we can't go south or we'll be, uh, we'll be in the county. Uh, estimated cost of servicing the land right now is around $45,000. I'm assuming that figure will probably go up and by the time it's done it's going to be around $70,000 per lot. But that is the least expensive industrial land that you will see uh, in eastern Ontario. We're positioned right because when it's serviced, and I uh, had a conversation with MPP Smith, will be one of the only cities on the 401 that has well over hundreds of acres that are going to be serviced. So um, it'll be great. Uh, we're going to be on the map and hopefully we'll continue to uh, attract industry uh, in our industrial park. Now, again, this is our, our project Toro that I kind of want to end with here. Um, construction began in July of 2022, and I don't know if anybody's been out in the industrial park and see the massive building that's uh, being built. And we've all been curious to battle uh, what this new business is. The site was purchased from the city for just over $4 million by Broccolini, who led the construction of this 1 million square foot warehouse facility. This construction has had significant economic growth, not only in the construction phase, but moving forward it will also. Uh, and during the construction, at its own expense, Broccolini constructed the first leg of the arterial road that will eventually connect to the new Highway 401 interchange. We expect to see the construction completed in the months ahead. I'm supposed to pause here. <laughs> okay, here comes the delivery. So. <laughs> from the kitchen. So I ordered this uh, from Amazon last night, and I'm pleased to share that Babel is the newest business, will be Amazon. Um, it's also my pleasure. I think it's got a clock and it's ticking. So I'll give that to Council Millet. Um, it's also my pleasure to share with you that Brooks Barnett, Amazon's Canadian Manager of Economic Development uh, Policy is with us today uh, to give his first to get his first taste of Bell. And Brooke and I met uh, uh, Brooks and I met yesterday and had a long conversation. So I'm going to get you center you out, make you stand up, and everybody uh, hopefully will be recognized. <laughs> I'm in trouble now. So. Yes, I ordered it, I think it was about 1 o'clock this morning, so that's just incredible. So I thank you for that. You must have had a connection to, to get that to us. Um, Brooks was very excited that Belva was the site of Amazon, or Belva is the site of Amazon's future logistic facility. And it's unique as this facility will be to our city. You've told me that there's a uniqueness to a facility like this in Canada. We're excited to learn more in the coming months, and it's exciting times ahead. Bell has established a strong economic development partnership, and we would not have this news to share today without the hard work and strong relationships of Quinney Economic Development Commission. Uh, they have a table here, and uh, Chris and everybody, thank you for this. Uh, you participated well, and I'd like to acknowledge you guys helping to bring this project to Bell. I also want to acknowledge Karen Post, again, I'm Senator Neo Karen, uh, who, well, in economic development department, worked hard to support this project with Broccolini through the construction phase, along with our city building and planning staff. And thanks to Heather Candler and our economic development team, who are here also, uh, work, working with Amazon to help them establish their footprint in Belleville. I know this will make uh, Brooks and the Amazon team welcome to years to come. And uh, a great relationship. We spoke yesterday about many things. Uh, and. Uh, those things will roll out. But one of the topics was corporate social responsibility. And I can tell you, this is a company that will uh, be, their, their standard is high, giving back to the community, and looking forward to supporting projects in Bell. So thanks a lot, Brooke, for bringing that information. Um, with that, I think that pretty much wraps it up. I had 10 or 15 minutes to get you out for breakfast. Uh, one of the things I forgot that has changed 
is I don't have uh, Council Millet writing editorials about me anymore. So <laughs> that's, uh, that's the only thing great, uh, great to change. But uh, moving forward, uh, lots on our plate. Um, people ask me if I'm enjoying this role. Uh, it's, yeah, it's loving every day. It's a dream job. Uh, the Lord has blessed me with a great council, uh, have great support, and a lot of great questions around the table. So exciting times ahead. We have a, a fantastic staff at City Hall that are moving us forward. Um, I know Joe Reed, I'll center you out with the snow plowing, but you did a great job this year. And uh, CAO Bovee here also to, to steer the ship and keep council out of trouble. So Raj, you've got a, a heck of a time for over the next three years keeping us all out of it. Thank you, Raj. Yeah, thank you, Raj. So with that, I guess uh, I'm on time. Now I gotta go meet Kelly on the waterfront trail. So. <laughs> <laughs> yes.